Hello everyone, I'm back. So, this is um, a thing I did a while back. It was sort of an experiment thing. This was done with uh, Ovatrol, the makers of Floatrol. They have this cracking substance and I did this a while back. If you um, go and search on my channel and you search for Ovatrol, you'll, you'll find it. So as you can see, it's really, really finely cracked, almost like an eggshell that is cracked. And um, it's kind of pretty. And I thought I'd just, you know, do something, a little pour on top of it, just to see how that works out. And then I am going to really um, varnish it up to a point where it looks like resin. So that was the, the plan. Uh, I'm going to leave a lot of negative space because I like the cracked background, of course, so we don't want to pour right over it. We just want to do a little thing on top. Now, the colors I've chosen are titanium white. This is uh, burnt umber. This is burnt sienna. And two colors of turquoise. Turquoise is made with phthalo blue and green and titanium. Now, if you want um, a, a turquoise that is a little bit more towards green, you put in a little bit more of the phthalo green. If you want it to go a little bit more blue, which you almost can't pick up on this um, monitor, but I can see it, the difference, then you put in a little bit more blue. Now, uh, the amount of uh, titanium you put in, it will lighten up that color. So the less titanium, the more intense the color, the more titanium you lighten it up. That's like normal. Now another thing I bought because I wanted to show you guys, and uh, you, you, you can find this online, but I wanted to show you, you know, with the wheel, what that does. Now this is called a color wheel and it helps you determine what you're going to be getting. Now when we put, talk about muddy colors, that is when the colors turn to mud really fast, it happens if you use colors opposite of the color wheel. So if we were to do blue and and this, this um, yellow orange and you can see that you would then get this, but it would also turn muddy really fast because you're using those two colors. Now, um, this wheel is really uh, handy. I'll, show, I'll tell you how it works. You pick out a color, say yellow, and if we add this one, red, that's what you get. You get orange. So if you have here yellow-green, you add the yellow, you get a bright yellow-green. Here you have a green, you add blue, this is the color you're going to get. Sort of really intense turquoise, teal kind of color. Now, if you add white, this is what you get. So blue, green, adding white, you get that. Blue, adding white, you get that. And that's how the, the wheel works. Now on the back you see um, they explain the complementary colors and complementary, well, you, you get the drift. Uh, violet, if you put in the yellow, that's complementary. And then you have all these different things that make it really, really um, very difficult to understand if you're not really into art. But you have monochromatic, analogous, whatever, the complementary, split comp complementary, triad, tetrad, key color, all that gibberish stuff that really, if you want to really study this kind of thing, I think it takes everything out of making art. I just don't like it. Because then, where's the element of surprise? Where's the element of, wow, what did I do? And all that kind of stuff. It is good to know about, you know, what colors do. And the primary colors, which are red, yellow, and blue. And that's a good thing to know and well the secondary colors maybe come in pretty handy secondary colors 
are mixing two primary colors together. So that that's kind of um, interesting. But other than that, I'd say, you know, just, you know, do your thing. Have fun with paint. Uh, that's what we're here all about. We're not trying to be professional artists. And I'm doing like this, professional artists. Because um, really, who is? We're all, we all started out, you know, just dabbing in paint and doing stuff and then sort of experimenting and, and finding out things that we find pleasing to the eye. And um, some people sell a lot of stuff, some people don't, but they enjoy creating. So who will really say who is a really, really good artist? Because most artists, they get recognized when they're dead, right? Most of them. That's when the paintings uh, turn into millions. Not thinking about my paintings turning into millions. <laughs> Sorry about that. Oh, that is too funny. Okay, we're going to pour this one. Let me get something really tiny. I want something tiny, something like this, because I don't want to overfill this canvas. Now, I have added a tiny bit of silicone in every color and I'll tell you that these turquoise colors I've mixed these like I don't know I think even before my vacation so um, these are really old so we'll have to see what what that does to the uh, pour but I think if you um, seal them airtight I think you can uh, pretty much uh, keep them like for a long long time a little bit more white Maybe this color on top. And this is another thing that maybe some people don't um, really see, but you can manipulate how these colors are layered in this little pretty little cup. What you do is you layer, and that's when you are really close to the surface, or you pour it from up high like this, and it'll go straight through so it'll mix all by itself so that's kind of uh kind of fun now i would like to stir it just a little bit so i'll take a little thing like this and stir it in and then we're going to pour it on top of here let's see And I want that going down there. That's probably more than I would really like. So let's see what happens when we burn this thing. Oh, I always say burn, but it's torching. Wow, pretty cells. Very pretty. Wow, this is extremely beautiful. Look at that. Let me get you in really close and really in sharp. Look at that. That is pretty, but we got nothing here. So we're gonna sort of move it around just a tiny little bit and hope that something pops up here. And don't over torch it because if it doesn't pop up, it's not gonna happen. The only thing you can do is manipulate it a little bit more or pour on it a little bit more like this and then pour it off really fast and now you got these gibberish uh, cells over here but that's the only thing that's going to help you uh, get more cells where you don't have them and as you can see here now we have a little bit of cells so that's okay you don't have to have it completely done if you don't really like it just wipe it off start all over perfectly okay to do that and I'm gonna try and make those a little bit more round but I think uh, this is it and now looking at it uh, on the monitor I'm thinking no it's pretty darn ugly so let's see what we can do with it mm -hmm, mm -hmm. okay 
I am going to give it a little bit more. So, but this time I'm going to use a little bit more of the browns and the uh, burnt sienna. A little bit more brown. Burnt sienna. And we're going to put some of the blue turquoise on top. Give it a little swirly here, there, okay? And I'm going to do another one, but this time I'm going to do a really thin one. Let's see what happens. Okay, that's more than enough. I see a lot of cells up here. Down here a little bit, there are some beautiful cells. I kind of like this. We'll see when it dries what it is. And you can always add to a dry painting. That question I get a lot. Uh, people asking me if you can um, put another layer on top. Absolutely you can because I've done that really from the beginning. I uh, did pour and pour and pour over pour, so that, that works because it, it really dries pretty flat. So tomorrow, uh, maybe not tomorrow, maybe next week, you'll see this totally dried and it's, it'll be totally um, flat. Let me get, maybe, oops, here's my little cloth because I'd like to do something in it. Let's see. Just make it move a little bit. Because now this is sort of like a ribbon laying on top. And what I'd like to have it do is incorporate it just a tiny bit into the painting. If you get my idea. I've been watching a couple of videos this morning on YouTube trying to come up with something really cool to show you guys but I got a little bit frustrated by someone on there I won't name any names because I don't think that chic but um, they were talking about um, copying and stuff like that I don't think they really had they did know what they were talking about because um, they said you know the person that um, was doing this kind of painting, the pouring of the paint. The person that found out this whole technique was Arthur Brothers. Well, we all know that's not true because this is a really old technique. If you go on a uh, YouTube and you go and find accidental painting, you will find the person, the first person that figured out that paint densities do a lot of things to paint. And that's the the I think the person first that put it you know in a video because of course a lot of people are doing this but they don't put it in a video so we don't know that those people are the first people to do something um, the thing is that I don't mind people copying whatever I do I don't care because that's not the thing that you want to be known for as an artist I know that a lot of people um, uh, especially um, Sheila Art. She does um, those really beautiful prints, but she won't tell the people or show them how she does them. And that is, that is okay. I am totally, I think she should do what she wants to do. Absolutely. That's okay. But I'd like to share it because who am I, you know, I don't find myself so interesting that everything has to be a secret. And I think if I put it out there on YouTube, I think everyone can do with it what they want to do with it. I think that's very fine by me. Of course you can't, I think the, the, the thing where I pull the, 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 the thing is when you um, take something someone's made and you make money from it. That's not the thing to do. 
I don't think I'd like that. Because I know a lot of uh, big department stores do that. They uh, use uh, some sort of uh, things people make and they use it as prints or something to make money of. I don't think that's very nice. At least give the artist some credit, give them some money so they can, you know, do their thing with their paint. I kind of like this. It's almost like a little centipede on, on a canvas. But um, that is, uh, that's my opinion, and everyone can have their own opinion. That's totally okay. But if you put your stuff out on internet, well, don't be surprised if someone's going to come in and, you know, do it. And even do it better than you, because there are a lot of talented people out there, right? But that's what YouTube's for. We're here showing you how to do something. We're explaining it. And then... <laughs> then we get upset because someone tries it I don't think so I think if you do that you're pretty pretty wacko in the head sorry <laughs> oh boy I'm gonna get a lot of comments on this but it is exactly why I think you know if if you don't want to share if you don't want people doing your work don't put it on the internet because it's gonna happen you can't hold it back I think it's starting to look like something I really like now because it's sort of like a little flat centipede, something I think a car drove over it or something like that. And then you got this splash in the middle and the centipede is all sort of coming out all over the place. <laughs> oh boy, I gotta stop this mood. This is uh, maybe something you're not really fond of visualizing like a flat splashed centipede but I think it looks kind of pretty I'm gonna go right through here a little bit more that's it stop that's it yep I like it absolutely like it show you up close just a little bit here there you go I like it. Okay, putting this away. I think.